Chapter 10, Unveiling the Secret Mr. Aga's concerns weighed heavily on his mind. He couldn't fathom how his own son might be working for the saboteurs. Was Zishan being coerced or blackmailed into this perilous path? His suspicions were fueled by the fact that Zishan had seemingly become an expert at concealing the transmitter. Aga couldn't shake the idea that this might not be his real son but an imposter working for the saboteurs. He took immediate action, moving his important documents to a secure location and changing the meeting venue. One day, Aga's health deteriorated, and he was prescribed capsules. Lost in thought, he accidentally let one capsule stick to his palate before finally swallowing it. This accident sparked an idea, what if Zishan was unwittingly carrying a microtransmitter capsule inside him? Aga went straight to Zishan's room and communicated through written notes, signaling the need for secrecy. Zishan was surprised but complied. Aga inquired in writing if Zishan had a transmitter. Zishan, still in shock, wrote N.O. Aga had brought a device to check for transmitters and began scanning Zishan's body. His hunch was right, there was indeed a microtransmitter capsule hidden within Zishan's body. It allowed the saboteurs to eavesdrop on conversations within Aga House from their headquarters. Aga shared all the details with Zishan, assuring him that they were aware of the transmitter and needed his help to catch the saboteurs. Zishan conveyed his willingness to assist his father. Aga immediately summoned his trusted officers for a secret meeting where he explained the situation. They made two crucial decisions. First, they would hold two types of meetings. One would take place outside the house in a secure location to discuss their original plan, while the second would be held at Aga's home. Where Zishan would provide false information to the saboteurs, attempting to ensnare them. Additionally, they decided to place a pendant around Zishan's neck. This pendant served as an emergency button. If Zishan ever felt his life was in jeopardy or if he fell into the saboteur's trap, he could press the button. This would alert the police, who would not only rush to Zishan's aid but also trace the saboteurs through the pendant. Mr. Aga stressed that, at this point, Zishan was an integral part of their mission, and it was the collective national duty of all involved to protect him.